Hello everybody. It's been quite a while, but I have a couple of uh, new sheets and some significant changes to the existing tournament sheets that uh, are going to accommodate a shared scorecard and um, an aggregation uh, worksheet. Uh, both of this, these new sheets are were created from feedback from people, uh, many of who are organizers of golf trips and are interested in being able to track um, uh, tournaments over multiple days and playing multiple uh, games against one set of scores. So you, they might go on a trip that's three, four days long, whatever, and the first day they might play a um, tournament that includes maybe best ball in a skins game and uh, to make it easier rather than have to enter all the player information and handicap information, course information, scores, etc. on each of the tournament sheets, there's now one scorecard sheet that all the tournament sheets will can go against and all that player information scores and course information is all, only has to be entered once so um, this video is going to talk about the uh, shared scorecard and i'll have the other another video coming up soon to talk about an aggregation sheet which will be able to aggregate uh, payout information for multiple tournaments over multiple days so uh, I did have to make quite a few changes to the tournament sheets to accommodate these uh, this shared scorecard. Right up front, I'm going to talk about the changes that were made and the point that anybody that wants to just use the tournament sheets as they were originally created and manually enter all of the player and course and score information individually uh, manually on each of the play uh, the uh, tournament sheets uh i the the original videos still are relevant to how to use the tournament sheets but i'm going to highlight some changes that i made here that make it look a little different and um um, for, for anybody that isn't interested in using the shared scorecard, just listen to the beginning of this video and um, note the changes that were made uh, and then refer back to the original videos and how to use the sheets. Um, but there is benefit in using the shared scorecard, even if you weren't going on a multi-day, you know, uh, golf outing. Um, it, the shared scorecard makes it a little easier to enter player information because it's all in order. There's no gaps between um, players as there are in the tournament sheets. And um, you can even cut and paste from another source uh, player and handicap information, for instance. Um, and one other thing that's that I did add on the um, uh, on the shared scorecard is equitable stroke control, which isn't on the tournament sheets. So if you, if you, your scores are being entered into the handicap system after you're done, you should enter the equitable stroke control, uh, final scores rather than the, in case you, in, in case you, uh, scored higher on a hole than you, uh, necessarily could record for handicap purposes. So uh, I'll talk about that later when I get into the shared scorecard. But let me highlight um, some of the key things that changed on the tournament sheets. And, and um, uh, then uh, those that don't care to use a shared scorecard can not bother listening to the rest of this video. And I'll get into the details on uh, the shared scorecard after this. So first of all, let me bring up one of the tournament sheets uh, so that you can see the um, the um, so I can highlight the differences from the original sheet. So I'm going to bring up the best ball uh, sheet here. Okay. So uh, let me go to course setup tab. 
So the first thing you're going to notice is that there's uh, the color of the cells is uh, some of some of them are orange now. Um, here on the scorecard sheet, you see the original yellow and um, and orange uh, cell colors. Um, the uh, originally the orange the yellow color meant that's where you are supposed to be entering data. Um, and on the um, new sheets, the orange highlights those cells that link to the shared scorecard, but you can still manually enter data on those cells also. So if you overwrite um, or want to manually enter data, you'll see that, uh, um, just change a couple of these here and show you you'll see that they turn back to the original yellow, which means that they're not linking anymore. They don't have the ability to link anymore. The formulas for linking to the shared scorecard have been overwritten by manually entering uh, information. So um, I'm just going to undo those two. Um, so that's the key thing you're going to see different if you go back to the original videos and see the uh, instructions on that. You'll see that these cells are highlighted a little differently. Um, but the point is that you can, if you, if you're not going to use the shared scorecard, you can just go in and manually enter the information just as they, they were originally created and everything will work just fine. Um, one of the other things I want to highlight is on the, uh, let's see, I made the skins, the skin sheet, for instance, um, and this is because of the aggregation sheet that's coming that I'll talk about in another video. You'll see a payout tab um, that in the master is highlighted in red and is called payouts for aggregated sheets, aggregated sheet. But that's there because of aggregating scores across multiple days and if there's a sheet that has multiple ways to to calculate payouts um, you, the, you have to select um, which payout you want to go into the aggregated sheet and I'll talk about that obviously when we get into the aggregated sheet video but that's something you can just ignore uh, if you're just using the, the sheets uh, individually and, and entering information manually. So, um, you know, you just go with which payout um, um, tab that you want to use and just disregard the uh, payouts for aggregated sheets. Something else you might notice when you open the tournament sheets is an enable content message. Uh, let me let me open a... Uh, sheet to show you an example of that. I'm opening the quota sheet. Notice the enable content message. If you're not using uh, the shared uh, scorecard, then you can bypass this. You can click X over here and bypass it. Uh, if you are using a share card, it has to be enabled. So, um, so just let, let me enable it and I'll show you something else. If you'll also get this pop up, can't find uh, the, the workbook to link to. And that's be because in this case, the shared scorecard either isn't in the folder that you're, you've got your tournament sheets in or it's it's got the shared scorecard is named improperly. So you can just continue on with that. But you can still go ahead and use the sheets manually um, overriding uh, information uh, in the in the cells that you need to, uh, or uh, you know, entering information in the cells that you need to, but um, uh, it, it's not going to link to the shared scorecard if you don't enable content. So I just want to highlight that. And what else? Oh, uh, there's just uh, one more thing that I wanted to highlight, and that has to do with anybody that was using these tournament sheets from Google Drive and running them in a browser, that will not work anymore. And that has to do with um, the fact that these cells have formulas in them that link to um, this shared scorecard and linking in Google Drive doesn't work. But 
This does work fine if you put it on a Microsoft OneDrive and then it will work perfectly out of a browser. For those of you that don't have Excel uh, and, and have been running it out of browser, I, I recommend using Excel, but uh, it does work out of a browser, but it has to be on Microsoft OneDrive. It does not work on Google Drive anymore. So it's very easy to set up a Microsoft OneDrive. You need to have a Microsoft account. There's no charge uh, if you don't need uh, excessive amounts of uh, space, uh, um, storage space. So it's a, it's a free service and uh, works fine. I've tested it out of the Microsoft Edge browser or Safari browser. Um, so you can do it that way if, if you had been using it on Google Drive in the past. So um, that's all I have for, for anybody that want, doesn't want to use a shared scorecard. You really don't have to listen to the rest of this uh, video. And uh, thank you. And uh, I'll continue on with getting into the shared scorecard and the details on how to use that. Thank you. Okay, so how do you use the shared scorecard? Let me uh, let me open that up, and uh, we'll get into that. All right, I have a, a shared scorecard all filled out here, but let me start with the description tab, and this gives you quite a bit of information about um, how you have to set this up. Again, the top part here is an explanation of why you would use the shared scorecard. Uh, but let's talk about the, the file naming section down here. So uh, first of all, um, the tournament sheets, all the tournament sheets that you want to link to the shared scorecard to a particular shared, shared scorecard must be in the same folder. It doesn't matter what the name of the folder is, but they all have to be in the same folder. And the name of the shared scorecard needs to be uh, scorecard.xlsx. So uh, you'll see that I have an example of a folder where I have uh, the tournament sheets, best ball, skins, stable for quota, and the shared scorecard.xlsx. Um, so as long as they're in the same folder, when you open up one of these tournament sheets, it will link to that shared scorecard. Um, let me uh, get back to that um, description tab again. Um, the, the shared scorecard does not have to be open for the links to work. Um, it may be a little faster if it is open, but even as long as it's in that folder, uh, it will link to, it will find that sheet and it will link to it. Okay. Um, let me skip, let me go over to the course setup tab. Now, th this scorecard is just like the scorecard uh, um, setup that you would use in the regular tournament sheets if you have used them in the past, but you know, if you need more information about how uh, to set up uh, one of these sheets, including the course setup and the um, scorecard information, this follows the same same inf um, same uh, data setup. Um, so, in the course setup tab, you name your course, you fill in uh, your your course information. Uh, all the holes that with par and handicap for each hole. You set up your tees um, and uh, the rating and slope for the tees and, and the default tee you want to use. And there's also this new feature that I added to all the tournament sheets a while back, but maybe not everybody has seen it. But if you were in Great Britain, Great Britain or Ireland, they, they do course handicap calculations a little bit different than um, the world handicap system. So uh, you choose which one you want to use here. Um, and, uh, and, and it's basically it. So if you've used the, the tournament sheets before, same, same thing, nothing changes here. And then on the scorecard tab, On the scorecard tab, you enter player uh, information. I just use letters for player names. 
their handicap index. Um, the T by default is what you set on the course setup tab, but you can change that to uh, another T if you so desire um, for any particular player. And um, the course handicap index is calculated. Um, it is set to 100% here uh, because this is used for equitable stroke control. Over here is where you see equitable stroke control. This is column AA. Um, but you can still change the course handicap uh, percentage in the tournament sheets. In each of the individual tournament sheets, you can set whatever you want there, but this stays at 100%. And then, of course, you fill in the scores uh, for all your players for, for the particular game that they play. Just let me highlight the uh, equitable stroke control for a second. This is something new that I added, and it's only on the shared scorecard. It's not in the tournament sheets. But, you know, when you're entering your handicap, you are restricted to how many strokes you can take per hole based on your handicap. So um, uh, this is the score you should enter in the handicap system. This is the score you, that's used for calculating who your wins and losses for uh, the particular tournament. But so, for instance, if if this person, uh, they're at eight uh, course handicap, this is the ninth handicap hole. So they can normally get a double bogey and that's fine. But if they get a triple bogey, uh, you'll notice that their score is 74 for the round, but their equitable stroke control is 73. And it's also highlighted in red um, that they exceeded their uh, strokes on that particular hole. So that may be useful or should be useful for, for your folks uh, as they enter their handicaps. Okay, so now let me go to my folder and open up one of the tournament sheets. Uh, let's go with best ball here. Okay, so um, let me go to the uh, description tab on this because here's more information about how to use the uh, shared scorecard at the end of the description section. Um, so some key points here is you'll notice the darker yellow highlighted cells. Uh, those are the cells that have links in them to the shared spreadsheet uh, and shared scorecard. Uh, again, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, the shared scorecard must be named scorecard.xlsx and uh, the shared scorecard sheet and the tournament sheets must be in the same folder for the linking to work. Uh, and again, the, the shared scorecard sheet does not have to be open as long as it's in the folder, but it may perform better if it is opened. Now, well, let me go to the scorecard tab. One thing you have to do on the tournament sheets is you have to enter your players. The, the, all the players and scores are entered on the shared scorecard, but you won't see any information here until you select uh, the players that you want to, to team up or have play as individuals. So uh, to make that easier, I did set it up with a drop down so you can select the players out of a drop down. Um, and let's say you're playing two person teams, uh, we'll select A and B. Notice that uh, as you select uh, a player, uh, they, they um, are removed from the dropdown, so you can't select them twice. You, you can also enter them, enter them manually, but they have to be the exact same name as in the shared scorecard. So you'll see that it's pulling the information in from the shared scorecard for their handicap index, um, uh, what T they, they were playing, uh, uh, and all of their scores. Um, and it, I didn't mention this, but it, you can see that the tournament sheet also pulled in all of the, the course information uh, from the shared scorecard. So all of that's uh, populated uh, automatically. So 
that's the reason that you have to select players here rather than it just fills in players is because I don't know on each of the games whether you're playing teams, individuals, maybe not everybody on the shared scorecard is playing, so you don't include everybody here. So that's why you have to put them in manually uh, for each of the tournament sheets, but everything else is populated automatically for you once you do that. So I don't think that's too much of a burden, but, but you know, it's difficult. Well, I don't know of a way to handle that because you may be playing teams again or, or, uh, or not everybody that's on the shared scorecard is playing, et cetera. So that, that's basically it. So, you know, once you put your players in, you'll see, um, you know, your payouts uh, automatically show up based on their scores, etc. So um, if you've used the, the tournament sheets in the past, everything is the same. Maybe I spruced up uh, some of the, uh, the layout a little bit for, for uh, uh, some of these uh, um, workbooks. But um, it all functions basically the same. It just pulls in the data from the shared scorecard rather than you having to enter it manually. So let me let me just show an example of opening an, another sheet that's going to go against the same scorecard. Um, let's go with uh, uh, let's go with a quota sheet. So I've already pre-populated all of the uh, um, players uh, from in this quota sheet for, as an example. So see, everything is populated. The scores are populated. Course setup is all here. Um, and here's all the payouts. Uh, well, you'll see this is a little off because of so many people. I didn't really set the scores. Uh, everybody's got the same score in this, in this particular uh, setup. Um, and the same handicaps for the most part, but um, you know that's why it uh, uh, everybody came in third place <laughs> on this particular um, game. And uh, but you know again, you, you only have to enter the, the player and score information once, and it and it, it will work with all of the uh, the tournament sheets. Let me highlight just one more thing uh, in case this pops up on you. I'm going to close this sheet. Uh, I'm going to close this sheet. And I'm going to close the shared scorecard. Um, I'm going to rename the shared scorecard so it can't be found when I open up one of the tournament sheets. And I'll show you something there. Let me do stable for it this time. All right, so this is what I wanted to show you. This enable content. Um, you, you may get this enable content, and if you are going to link it to the shared scorecard, you need to enable content because that enables the linking. If you're just going to enter stuff manually and not use a shared scorecard, you can just X that out. But um, let me enable content. Mm -hmm. And you'll notice that this pops up. It couldn't find the shared scorecard workbook. Um, and that's because, you know, I renamed it uh, um, and it's not in the folder. So I'm going to hit continue here. Um, and uh, what you do is probably just close this out and make sure that the shared scorecard is in the folder and is named properly. and do it again and you see you don't get that error anymore um, and if I should make a make a modification on the shared scorecard so let's let's change uh, this uh, player A to uh, play from the white tees um, and you'll see that that changed automatically to white here uh, so it, it should just to show you that it is linking 
So I hope you find this useful. I know this was a lengthy video, um, but I hope you'll find the shared scorecard useful. And it does feed into this aggregation sheet that I'm going to uh, do a video on in the near future. Uh, and again, for, for people that are coordinating uh, golf trips and doing multi-tournament, multi-day uh, functions, um, I think this is the reason it was created and it should be a big help. So I hope you find it useful. And um, uh, if, uh, you know, whenever you want to download, just go in and request a download of the uh, shared scorecard sheet. Or, and of course, you'll need the new tournament sheets to go along with that. So just request that and I'll uh, promptly uh, get you a link to download that. All right. Thank you. Uh, talk to you soon. Bye.